This section covers everything so you need to know is to pass the ACCA Strategic Business Leader or the SBO exam in the upcoming sitting. My name is Steve Chun, the fellow member of ACCA, founder for Four Accounting Books, tech advisor for ACCA AB Magazine, holding Marcus position in two major accountancy bodies. Now, in this section, firstly, I will go through the SBO exam pass rate around about 52%, something like that, in the past few sittings. And then there will be only one exam variant okay, for the SBO paper. The format of the SBO exam paper will include three questions on the exam date with multiple exhibits or we can call them as unseen information, which relate solely to the pre-seen case material released by ACCA, usually two weeks before the actual SBO exam. And of course, you can download the SBO pre-seen material from my ACCA portal, which means go to exam planner, and you can see the download button from there. And of course, there will be four exam sittings for the SBO in one year, in March, June, September, and December exam. And of course, there will be four different pre cases released by the ACCA. There would be 100 marks in total, split into 80 technical marks and 20 professional skills marks. And the duration of the exam would be 195 minutes. I would highly recommend my students to use the first 15 minutes to read the questions exhibits to plan the answer before dipping into writing out the answers. You need to know about the verbs in the exam. The, also, the SBO syllabus will be important. Making sure that you read the examiner's report and technical articles published by the ACCA. And I'll also tell you about how you're going to best prepare for your SBO exam using our strategy, including the preparation time and the strategies to go through the past exam papers of SBO. And also, I will touch on the SBO exam techniques and giving you some of the examiner's highlights as well in this paper. Now, this paper, relatively difficult, because it's absolutely different from other papers in the ACCA journey. Because this paper, I would say that markers are quite generous indeed in awarding you marks if you can explain something related to the case, related to the requirements that is given to you. However, a lot of students fail this paper simply because they wrote too much unneeded information. So when I mark my students' mock exam of the SBO paper, I've seen many of them in the past when they submitted the first mock exam, writing too much intro, which means summarising the information from the case, from the pre-scene or even from the exhibit. There's no need to do that. And therefore, I will give them my constructive feedback so when they submit the second mock exam, of course, marks are greatly improved. Now, the pass rate is around about 50%. So as you can see, 52% in December 2023, 50% in September, 51, 50 and 49% in 2013 to December 2022. So this effectively means that this paper is not very difficult indeed in terms of pass rates. However, you do need to have exam technique to pass this paper effectively. Now, in terms of the order of the exam, there will be no strict order. So which means that I will highly recommend you to take the SBO paper first before other strategic professional level papers. Now, the format of the SBO exam paper, 
So nowadays, there will be the pre-seen information about one single company, and that company is a fictitious company in order to avoid political influences. So there will only be one company that you need to focus on before you sit the actual exam. The pre-seen information <coughs> for the uh, last few sittings, for example, in September 2023 exam, uh, when we are focusing on the airline business, it's called the Cogest Company, only 12 pages of the pre -seen. In December 2023, when we focus on the cloud-based company, it's called the NC Tech Company, only 11 pages. And in March 2024, focusing on the Football Cup Company, it's only 12 pages pre seen information. Now, the pre seen information typically includes the introductory section, the industry information, the company information section, and even the financial information section. So, you are required to know the information given by the ACCA. And of course, ACCA officially said that no more than that. But according to my experience, doing a bit of research about the industry, as well as the complete information about the similar company operating in real life, and that will be very, very important as well. Okay? It will absolutely give you additional quality marks when you write your answer on the script. Now, on the exam date, there will be the unseen information given by the examining team that you need to achieve 50 marks or more to pass this paper. 80 technical marks and 20 professional marks. 20 professional marks will be split into the analysis skill. So this means that whether or not you can explain the numbers. Evaluation skill. So this means that whether or not you can explain pros and cons with your own conclusion. Skepticism skill. So this means that always the challenge if you are seeing that for example, management estimates, there will be 4% of a growth rate and something like that. So you can challenge on that. Commercial acumen skill, effectively. So we are talking about whether or not you can explain the reasons behind it. You can explain the implications of that. For example, the implications of your strategy or action onto different groups of stakeholders. And also the communication skill. So this means that whether or not you can write out the correct format okay, in your answer. So, for example, preparing for the project initiation document or PIT. For example, <coughs> so whether or not you can prepare for the integrated report, whether or not you can write a memo or the press release, and something like that. The good news for the professional skills marks would be that each of the skill will only be tested once okay in the exam question and of course each of the skill will be worth at four marks in the SBL paper now when markers are marking your script how they will give you professional marks according to the ACCA's marking scheme there'll be four levels of professional marks that will be awarded to students now if the examining team things that the student is not performing quite well at all, so this means that they will give zero marks to students. However, if it is not so well level, we'll give them 1.33 marks. If quite well level, giving students 2.66 marks, very well level, four marks there. And of course, in most circumstances, 2.66 are the marks that we commonly see, okay, so when the markers are marking a student's script. It will really depend on whether or not students' answer in terms of technical marks will be quite well. If they think that the technical marks are quite well, there's no point giving zero professional marks to students at all. So this means that the professional marks will be the subjective marks that giving to students and um, so analysing the student's ability, whether or not they can really demonstrate 
that they've got the abilities to explain what comes next okay, to the examining team. That's very, very important there. Now, of course, as you can see <coughs> on my screen, I also told you that you can download the preceding information, usually two weeks before the actual exam, through the exam planner. Download the preceding information, study that, and then on the exam day, three questions in there with additional unseen information, so make sure that you're ready. So, there will also be the pre-seen guidance released by the ACCA, so telling you that don't do lots and lots and lots of research, okay, on, on, onto, the in, on, onto the internet over the company's background information, so make sure that you focus on the SBL syllabus, uh, so uh, relate back to the pre seen information, that will be absolutely fine there. But from my perspective though, in order to differentiate yourself from others, yes, we can help you to do additional background research. So usually we release our pre seen package, okay? So once the pre seen material is released by the ACCA, and we tell you exactly what you need to know, in, including our tipped questions for the SBL, uh, so you can fully prepare for your exam in the upcoming sitting. Now, sometimes the professional skills marks can turn the marginal failed paper into a pass script. So what do I mean by marginal failed paper? It's like the papers with only 47 marks, 48 marks, 49 marks and something like that. Of course, the marking team will be quite generous indeed, as far as I know, that they will certainly help you to convert your uh, failure paper into past one. So make sure they always tell the examining team that your answer is not just copying and pasting the information from the case, copy and pasting information from the unseen, which means the exhibit information. So make sure that you at least do a little bit of analysis, okay, for each point that you've made. That's very, very important there. Now, when we focus on the professional skills marks, <coughs> for example, for the analysis skills marks, there will be particularly three steps that you can follow. So which means that always, if the examining team asks you to interpret the key performance indicators or additional information, so what you need to tell the examining team is that, firstly, maybe you need to do a bit of calculation, and then, you need to compare with your competitor or the industry average and to see whether or not your company's performance is improving or not. And also tell the examining team that what does the information actually mean. So which means that if the ratio is not particularly good, what would be the impact on the business in the longer term? Commercial acumen on the other hand, you will need to demonstrate your business awareness. For example, if a company is not doing a good job, so failures in procurement, marketing and so on. So you need to tell the examining team what will be the impact of those. And then demonstrating your effective judgment and to see what is the more important one. So you need to discuss about that first. And then showing your insight. So here, for example, the, the pre analysis related to real life company would help. So what real life companies have been doing in real life and you can take their action so tailored to the precinct case and that would certainly help there to demonstrate that you've got the insight into developing the answer. However, don't tell the examining team that okay I write this part and this relates to professional skills for example analysis one, I write this part this relates to a skepticism skill, don't do that, there's no point doing that at all. Now, another one would be the communication skills, okay, so for example, you need to get the format right and making sure that you answer all the requirement. So at the same time, you also have got the evaluation skills, okay, so make sure that you always balance the argument, so for example, putting out a point and then say, but, okay. So considering the financial, non-financial consequences that will help, and giving your own recommendation, 
and that will certainly help there. So don't be afraid of giving recommendation on the exam day. So tell the examiner to about, so for example, if a company's not doing a good job, my recommendation may be to seek long-term debt finance, for example. So making sure that giving recommendations, yes, that will help you scoring evaluation skills marks if the evaluation skill is tested in that particular question. Skepticism marks, on the other hand, what really talks about whether or not you've got sufficient evidence to support the claim. So, for example, if a management team says that in the future our company will be doing a good job, but looking back to the past data, maybe a bit of optimistic, okay, for the company's management to say that. So, therefore, you may need further evidence of doing that. If you were to challenge the management team members, do it in a professional and courteous way. Now, I've seen some of the students challenging the information given by management by saying that because this information is given by that manager, that manager is not in a senior level, so I don't trust them. So if you're saying these words, of course, I would say that it's not in a professional and courteous way. So at least you need to obtain further information to support the claim. So this is the standard format to the answer that you can write out on the exam data. Now, regarding the exam duration and so on, I would highly recommend my students to spend the first 15 minutes to plan the question and then using 180 minutes to deal with the rest of the uh, exam. So this means that if you were to take 180 minutes and divide this into 80 technical marks, you will need to spend 2.25 minutes per mark when planning the deadlines for each of the sub requirements in the, uh, in the exam. Now, how many sentences do you need to write? Of course, if you are given 10 marks, I will highly recommend you to write 10 sentences. And each of the sentence should be at least, for example, 1.5 lines. Now, here is my disclaimer. I'm not saying that copying the information from the unseen or the pre-seen material will constitute one sentence. Because there'll be no marks at all when you're copying that information from the case. However, Copying the information from the case, from my perspective, don't do that. But of course, you can do that. But from my perspective, according to my experience, don't do that. Just to summarise, okay, you can copy and paste the case information into your answer, and then to summarise it into your own words, perhaps using a subheading, and directly dipping into that point, saying that what would be the implications, what would be the reasons behind it, and what would be the pros and cons, what would be the risk and what would be the recommendations. Showing your insight will be absolutely important key in every sentence that you write in the exam. So make sure that uh, you can follow that. The exam will be the computer-based exam. So this means that you will receive your final re exam result usually four weeks after the current exam. So make sure that you are aware of that. Now, you also need to notice the verbs in the SBO exam. So, for example, if you are required to analyse something, effectively, you need to tell the examining team why it happened. If you're asked about to assess something or to evaluate something, so this means that you will need to determine the pros and cons and also with your conclusion in the end. If you are required to compare something, you will need to discuss about the similarities and differences among different options. Concluding something, so which means what to do next. Criticise something, which means to explain the weaknesses and problems. Interpret something, make sure so you focus on the numbers and how is it calculated and what will be the reasons behind it. Outline something, you are not required to write too many words in one sentence. Summarising something would just to be very similar to outline something. Critically, 
simply means that you look out what's wrong with it and where the information is missing from the wider scenario. So which means you need to take it more seriously. It's like to analyse something. So make sure that so you understand these type of words in the SBO exam. Now, not only for that, the SBO exam syllabus, as you can say, has been the service area A up to the service area J. Now, firstly, service area A is talking about the leadership. So because this paper is the strategic business leader, you need to take a holistic approach when you're answering the question in the exam. So for example, if you're required to uh, comment on the internal control problems, you're not simply be required to comment on the internal control procedures problems, but even the problems related to the control environment and something, or something else, so it needs to be expanded. The syllabus area B talks about the corporate governance, so make sure that you notice that this will be the theoretical part in your syllabus. Service area C is talking about the strategy, including using PESO and Porter's Five Forces model and something like that. And also we've got this service area D, analysing the risk that the company is facing. And of course, that would be part of the accountability according to the UK Corporate Governance Code. So make sure so you're ready for that using the framework on that. But you're not required to know quite a lot of frameworks when dealing with risk. But uh, using one framework will be absolutely enough to show the holistic view. But when you're answering each point, so make sure they bring details specifically to the case. There's no point in simply emphasising the fact that the information system is rubbish, okay, in the client's company, if the information system has just been updated by the client's company. There's no point in emphasising that the information needs to be improved, the system needs to be improved. There's no point in doing that at all. So make sure that you always focus on something that is most applicable to a client's company. And also information technologies, that this topic may be combined with other management accounting stuff. So for example, whether or not the, the proposed project in terms of investments in upgrading that information system is needed. Service area number F is talking about the management reporting, internal control and audit systems and so on. So make sure you always know the roles of internal audit function or something like that. Service area G talks about the financial technique from the applied skills level in terms of planning, implementation, evaluation, strategic options and actions. So you're required to use, for example, the SFA test, the suitability, feasibility and acceptability and combining with other financial techniques, so for example, the MPB and so on, and to evaluate the strategic option. Service area H talks about how to enable success within the business through innovative thinking, applying the best-in-class strategies, disruptive technologies in management of change, initiating and leading and organising projects, whilst effectively managing talent and other business resources. Now, this topic, again, from my perspective, the project management, is in, in terms of the project initiation document, you need to know about the format of that, but anything else related to the syllabus area, number eight here, will be quite open questions. So you can develop different points as long as your point is fully justified and you will get very reasonable marks here. Syllabus area number I talks about professional skills that I just mentioned before and the J area talks about the skill of using the computer, for, for example, the Excel and the word processor and even that you need to know how to prepare the slides as well. Now, examiner's report of the SBO and technical articles can be uh, accessed through the accaglobal.com and make sure that you're ready. So how are you going to be revising for the SBO paper then? I've divided this into three parts here. Firstly, there will be some of the must-know business models that you have to cover 
Now, if you don't have much time in preparing for the SBL paper, don't worry, and we will be summarizing all of these in our course, and you will go through these topics in just a few hours. So, for example, you need to know about the SWOT analysis, analyzing the internal and external environments that a client's company is facing. The PESO analysis talks about the macro environment, value chain analysis, dividing all the activities within the business into the primary as well as the secondary ones, and to know about the strength and weakness of the company. Porter's Diamond analysis talks about if a company expands overseas, and also the five forces analysis according to Michael Porter. So this means that whether or not the industry is profitable. We can also think about the answer of growth vector matrix to talk about whether or not the company should focus on the existing market, which means people, and also the existing product or not. Generic strategies talks about whether or not the company should choose to become the leader in terms of costs or to differentiate itself from others. Using the SFA test to evaluate whether or not the strategic option is viable. Using a cultural web analysis, I use my own mnemonic in my course, it's called PS Cost, to analyze if you were to change the business, you're also to change perhaps the culture. So in what elements of the cultures that you can change. And even the turnaround strategy for change management, if you're gonna be thinking about the business needs a transformational change. Whether or not that change will be accepted by different stakeholders, so you need to know about the factors that you will need to consider according to Balogun and Hopale. Note about the project management cycles, e-marketing for six eyes, and Mendeleev's mapping matrix dealing with stakeholders. So these are the business models that you need to learn yeah, in the exam. There will be a lot more business models in the SBO syllabus, but from my perspective, if you can't go through the rest of them, it's absolutely fine there. Just to use your business common sense, you will score very reasonable marks in this paper. The step two, you need to revise quite a few theoretical areas in the SBO syllabus. So for example, the roles of board, directors, secretary, committees, and the corporate governance code, and the role of internal auditor, and also the risk manager, integrated report format, project initiation document format, internal control framework. So these are must-know theoretical areas, so you need to know about that. So for example, in my course, I've summarized, especially for internal control part, use my own mnemonic again, it's called CC Ring. Talks about the control environment for the first C, control procedure for the first C, risk management for the first third R, information and communication for the fourth I, and finally monitoring, which means we should do it. Now, not only for that, the final step in the SBL is to have, from my perspective, the in-depth pre-seen material analysis. Because if you know the pre-seen information only at the surface level, so think about it in this way, you are about to attend the board meeting, or at least you should send the email replying to the director in the board. But uh, suppose that you only come to the company for the very first day because you just read through the pre scene without knowing them in detail at all. So when you are required to deal with specific tasks, so whether or not you've got confidence of doing that. Well, if I were you, I don't have the confidence of doing that at all. If I don't read the pre scene or at least doing some of the research about the pre scene material. I'm not saying that you need to use most of your time in analysing what has happened in real life, because that would be a complete waste of time. I quite agree with what ACC has said. But my view is this. Since the pre seed material is released by the ACCA, don't just to consider that the ACCA wants to reduce the exam difficulty and therefore uh, changing from the four hours to 
uh, 3 hours and 15 minutes uh, exam duration. And, and therefore, the, if the ACCA gives you the pre seen information, just don't take it seriously and to know a bit words, for example, what's the company name it is and the industry that it's in. So when you're answering the question, trust me, so when the scripts are marked, you will see the level of quality will be absolutely different from those who have spent some time in analysing the pre seen information there. So this is why before the exam, I always release the pre seen application there, helping students to absorb the pre seen information using my specific and unique teaching approach to directly give you the necessary information that you need in order to pass this paper. Now, how long do you need to spend to study the SBL? So from my perspective, you've got using the study hub or education hub resources from ACCA, yes, 10 weeks covering the syllabus, four weeks covering the revision questions, yes, that would be good. And there will be additional resources released by the ACCA, for example, through their uh, student resources uh, hub, so for example, from YouTube channel as well. There will be a lot of good tutors, expert tutors, uh, and uh, they will be going through the past exams and also the examiner's report and the theory recap. I think these are quite useful. But if you want to study the SBO with me, with Global APC, my plan is to go through the SBO course in just 3.5 weeks covering what you need to know to fit into your busy uh, working schedule and three weeks covering the pre scene and also additional information, additional revision questions to help you best prepare for this paper. So also for the latest pre scene I also write my mock exam, so applicable to the pre scene so you can submit and we will mark it for you with constructive feedback. The writing approach of your answer in the SBO exam, I'll give you two tips there. Firstly, for each of your points, make sure adding the keywords like because, so that, which means the implications, to demonstrate to the examining team that you can explain so what. Why are you going to be giving that information? Okay, I give it in, uh, give it in this way. Because this will have an impact on your business. So I will need to take it seriously. Now, tip number two. Very, very important there because I've seen some of the native English speaker, they tend to uh, have this problem is that over explain something. Most of them, maybe, so studying the papers in the past, and then when they come to the SBO paper in terms of exam technique, they simply copy and paste the information from the pre scene or the unseen. At the same time, giving a lot of intro, so for example, I'm going to be writing our report, okay, so some of them may be working in uh, big four accountancy firms and in consultancy departments and, and something. So uh, they treat this exam, it's like the real life consultancy work. I'm not saying that this is different, but it's a bit different now. Because this is an exam. So this means that you are not required to give the best advice to your client, but giving reasonable advice, whether or not it's right or wrong in practice, it doesn't really matter. As long as it looks fine in terms of the exam techniques point of view, so for each point, it's not too long, 1.5 line sentence, I will see the key information needs, for example, because implications, that's absolutely fine, I will award you one mark, for example. So over explaining your point, is not necessary. You are not required to say that this company is not doing a good job. If you were to do this, per my suggestion, this is not only good for your company, but also good for the planet, good for the society. More taxes will be collected by government. Don't say that. Your focus will only be 
on the companies that you're discussing about. So always position yourself as the management team members in the client's company. It's important that you think about that. So get rid of the textbook stuff because we are not interested in that as a markup. We are more interested in seeing your insight onto the company's future. Now, not only for that, past exams will be important. So at least two recent past exams will be important to cover. And of course, if you don't have time to cover all the previous past exams, at least two sittings, including the pre scene and the past exam, and also the answers would be important there. Now, to pass the SBL in the first attempt with our own exam technique, firstly, don't simply jump into the question, but use 15 minutes of time to plan the answer, and then copying the key pre seen information, including the company name, location, properties, client space, services it provides, mission, vision, values, onto the scratch part. There will be the on-screen scratch part, so copy that information in, so when you're writing your answer, always check that information, okay, I can uh, relate this information to my answer there. And of course, I will tell you exactly how to do that in my course. And then, plan the number of points that you need to write. So for example, one mark equals to one point. One point equals to one sentence with 1.5 lines. So is ACCA SBA easy? Uh, my answer to you is that it will be easier for those native English speakers than those who are not. But uh, don't fall into the trap that you are treating this exam as a written paper with lots of beautiful sentences and metaphors to be used. Don't treat that exam as an essay. This exam is just to be the business case exam. You are required to use simple sentences and to explain the key point to the exam link team. So this means that if you have the necessary technique, of course, you will find the SBL paper relatively straightforward to pass. Now, in terms of the financial information given in the pre in each and every sitting, from my perspective, at least you need to bear that in mind. What will be the revenue changes? Is it good or bad? Profit margins of the company and notice the regulatory requirement as well. So, for example, in March 2024, when we discuss about the football club, we notice there will be the requirement called the FFPR. So make sure that you know something about it, and that will be absolutely fine there. That this is how we utilise the financial information in the pre -seed. According to the examiner's highlight, as we can say, I've taken from... December 2023 examiner's report, it says that many candidates made sufficient use of the information presented in the exam exhibit, which means the unseen exam information, that's quite bad, to support their answers, despite that these being the key to generating relevant points to use in their answers. So, because when we are analysing a pre scene the pre scene was stand for what happened in the past of this company. But on the exam day, as you can say, things would change. So this is why not only you need to know the history from the pre scene but more importantly, you need to focus on the unseen exhibit given on the exam day to generate into answers. So make sure that you're ready for that. At the same time, the some of the candidates continues to answer the task they wish had been set rather than task actually set. This seems to be have been compounded by the introduction of the pre scene information, so this is not needed. If some candidates clearly preparing answers from this information and then using this regardless of the question being asked. So this is why it's important that you attempt the mock exams 
so you can familiarize yourself what may be different on the exam day. So don't just to assume that what has happened in the mock exam in the pre scene can be repetitive on the exam day, so don't do that. So make sure always position yourself as the CEO or manager in the business so you are fully in charge of the business direction into the future. So this means that you can make whatever decisions that you want but make sure always to balance the risks and rewards of your decision and the impact on the different stakeholders of this company. So this really helps to improve the quality of your answer. I wish you the very best of luck to pass the SBL exam in the upcoming city and good luck. Bye for now. APC, accounting for your future.